What's going on, Miami Dolphin fans? Before we get into the biggest winners and losers from the NFL Scout and Combine on all four days, I got to give some major love to today's sponsor, Manscaped. If you guys haven't tried out their awesome ultra premium collection, then you're definitely missing out. So head on over to get all of their awesome, awesome gear at manscaped.com. Just use code DOLPHINS. That's 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. Sources close to me tell me if you use Manscaped, you're going to be a first-round pick. So what I figured I would do here on today's show is try to find the biggest winners and losers that essentially matter to Miami Dolphin fans. And I based it on some team needs like offensive line, whether that's offensive tackle, interior offensive line, like center, guard, you need help on the O-line, running back, wide receiver, cornerback safety. I try to find a whole bunch of these players and tell you the biggest winners and losers. Some of the biggest day one winners, and remember, this was like your wide receiver, quarterback, tight end. I didn't really put any quarterbacks. I didn't really put any tight ends on here. I concentrated at the wide receiver position. Calvin Austin, Alec Pierce, Kevin Austin Jr., and then Sky Moore. The one name that I really want you guys to keep in mind from this list, Sky Moore. This dude can fly around the football field. And if you're looking to take a few more deep shots with Tua, he's definitely a guy to keep in mind. Let's go to these other three names here. Christian Watson, the receiver from North Dakota State. Really, really excited about him. He's like 6'4", 200 pounds. Could be an absolute stud in the league. And then the two Ohio State receivers, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. I've been a bigger fan of Olave. Wilson showed his athletic ability, but from an from a route running ability, Olave to me with his 40 time, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on the Chris Olave hype train. In terms of some of these day one losers, David Bell, the receiver from Purdue. This one breaks my heart a little bit because I took him in the uh, in my latest mock draft for Miami. Was not excited about what I saw from him. Traylon Burks, I'm going to throw him as a loser because everyone, including myself, was like, this dude's going to light up the combine. And, well, I don't know if his matches weren't working. I don't know. I just nothing really lit up. He was okay, but not nearly as good as what you were hoping for. And then Jake Ferguson. The reason why I'm going to throw him on here is because with the Dolphins' new scheme, you could see that potentially look at a tight end in the draft. And if, let's just say they're unable to get back Durham Smythe or they don't like what they see out of uh, Long. So what do you guys think here? Go down to the comments. I'm going to ask you, who do you think is a big-time winner from each day? The biggest day one winner for me was Watson from North Dakota State. I mean, this is a dude that when you're a younger player and when you're not at a FBS school, you want to go out and show yourself. I really think he did that. So you guys let me know who was the biggest day one winner that the Dolphins could draft. It's time to go to day two, and I know a lot of Dolphin fans had their eyes set on this day because the running back position is a fun one. Brees Hall, the running back that I talked about yesterday on uh, yesterday Dolphins show, he really, really showed up to me. I liked what I saw out of Kenneth Walker, Pierce Strong Jr., the running back from San Diego State, Trevor Penning. I told y'all. I hate to I hate to say I told y'all all the time, but I told y'all. Trevor Penning is a grown man. And also, I took Abraham Lucas in a latest mock draft. He's actually at Washington State, not Washington. But still, Abraham Lucas is a guy that I absolutely love. So yesterday I talked to y'all about let's do this whole subscriber battle, and I am just a – Competitive person. I love to win, but I hate losing more than I like winning. And if we are trying to catch Seahawks today, let's go ahead. Let's conquer this YouTube channel. And if you're keeping track, we had about 12 more subs than they did yesterday. It's going to be a long battle, but I know that we can go ahead and get there. So if you love the Dolphins, I want you to hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications because the more subs this channel gets, the more videos we can get. I hate to break it to you, Seahawks today gets more channels than the Dolphins today. Let's go ahead and let's change that. Let's look at some other day two winners here on the offensive line. Kellen Deesh, who's the offensive tackle from Arizona State. Liked what I saw from him. From some of these guys on the interior, Zion Johnson. Zion Johnson was a player that I thought might get into the first round. Now I think he almost cemented himself doing that. Uh, Matt, I can never pronounce his last uh, name from... Um, Maletsko, he's actually from North Dakota State, which is a player that I liked a whole bunch, and he's another guy that really boosted his value. Cameron Jurgens, Sean Ryan as well. well. Look at some of these day two losers. This one really broke my heart. I was hoping for more out of Isaiah Spiller for the simple fact of Isaiah Spiller was my number one running back. It's just you, you hope that some of the combine stuff measures up, and Spiller, Walker, and Brees Hall were all like neck and neck for me. I think now I'm going to put Brees Hall at number one. Kyron Williams, uh, dude, Kyron Williams was bad. Like, there's no other way to put it. He was really, really bad. K 
Kenyon Green was a player that I've brought up multiple times. He did not have a good day. Max Mitchell, the offensive tackle from the Raging Cajuns of the University of Louisiana Lafayette. He was a player that I knew flirted with round one potential. Sorry, it ain't happening anymore. So now I want to know from day two, who was the biggest day two winner that Miami should go out and draft? I mean, I want to say it's Brees Hall because I think he has cemented himself now. He's more than likely the number one running back off the board. But another guy who I really thought hurt himself with, Kenyon Green, and it really, really, truly breaks my heart. If you want to be a winner and you want to be a day one draft pick, then I told y'all, you got to go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. The Ultra Premium Collection, I absolutely love it, and you guys can get your hands on it with promo code DOLPHINS. It's usually $49.99. We can get it for you now for $39.99. This is uh, something that's going to take care of you from the moment you walk into the shower, then from the moment you get out, whether you want to wash your hair, which whether you want to. I mean, I would hope you guys wash your hair. Shampoo and conditioner every time. Then when you step out, use the body wash, use the deodorant. And lip balm is really important, especially when it's cold out. Have you ever seen somebody, their lips, they just look like, I don't know, SpongeBob in that, SpongeBob in that episode where he's like, water. You don't want to be that guy. So go ahead, get your hands on the Ultra Premium Collection at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. Just use code DOLPHINS. That way it tells them that, hey, we went ahead and sent you. So if you guys can count, if day two is the day that we just talked about, guess which day we're going to be talking about next? You guessed it, day three. And here's some of my biggest winners. Some people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, why do you not have Jordan Davis on here? Jordan Davis is not going to go at 29. I should also have mentioned that. I tried to put players that were realistic, like had a realistic chance of going to the Miami Dolphins. Jordan Davis is not going to happen. The other defensive tackle, and I say the other defensive tackle from Georgia, Devonta White, I really liked what I saw out of him. Travis Jones, if you're looking for a big run stopper, this is a dude that it's probably not going to be available now in round three. Troy Anderson, I, I had this guy mocked in our, our latest Dolphins mock draft. He played running back, he played quarterback, he played linebacker, over 154 tackles, and had himself a hell of a day. Uh, Brandon Smith, Leo Chanel was another linebacker that I liked out of Wisconsin. Glad he was a winner. In terms of some edge rushers, let's just say Miami is unable to go ahead and bring back Emmanuel Agba, right? Boy, a Mafe, Amari Barno, and personally, the fact that this kid ran, I think he ran like a 4-3-40, was blazing speed for Virginia Tech. And then Dominic Robinson, Channing Tittle, just a more, more names to at least keep in mind. So who do y'all think was the biggest day three winner? that the Dolphins should go out and target. And I want to remind y'all, this is the NFL Combine Days, not day one of the NFL Draft, not day two of the NFL Draft, not day three. This is the NFL Combine Days. So who was the biggest winner that you want the Dolphins to go out and draft? Let's now talk about the day three losers. I got Kingsley, um, and then DeMarvin Leal, Neil Farrell, and then Josh Ross. Josh Ross was, not that I'm surprised, because Ross was a guy that, again, I took in our, in our Dolphins mock draft. However, he never was really somebody who I thought was super athletic. He struggled more than what I anticipated, but he was always been a leader, a two-time captain at Michigan, and somebody who I thought could maybe go in round five probably is going to slide back even a little bit farther. But De DeMarvin Leal, big-time loser. At one point, before the whole process started, probably about three months ago, I had Leal as my number one defensive tackle and now he's probably fallen down. And yes, uh, Jeremy, producer Jeremy just whispered by ear, Texas A&M had a lot of losers. And yes, you're, you're damn right that they did. Let's go to day four, some of the winners here. I really try to concentrate on cornerback and safety because I figured you guys didn't want special teams guys. So Tariq Woolen, if you remember, the UTSA corner apparently was like 6'4", 205 pounds. That stuff was true. And that he ran a 4'2 flat. That's not so true. He did run an incredible time. I believe it was 4.26, proving that he is an athletic specimen. Zion McCollum from Sam Houston State, he had himself a hell of a day. Nick Cross, Marquise Bell, you guys probably know from being uh, down there in Florida. And then Alonzo Taylor, the cornerback from Tennessee, my day four winners. So if you haven't catch the, catch the drift yet at today's show, I want to know the winners much less than I want to know the losers because – Miami, they've drafted way too many losers in the past. So who was the biggest day four winner that Miami should go out and target? Let's talk about some day four losers. Trent McDuffie and Kyler Gordon, two Washington corners that I was just expecting more from. I've seen a lot of people actually have Trent McDuffie as the number one ranked corner in this year's class. Sorry, Sauce Gardner, 
He was an absolute dog. And even the fact that Derek Stingley struggled, which remember he was injured, which is why I also had him in a loser in another show. I think Sauce now is going to be the number one corner off the board. Jermaine Walker, Jalen Petrie, another loser here on day four. If you guys made it this far in the video, please go ahead and like the video. That way I don't look like a loser to my bosses.